Welcome back to the channel. This is Trendy Storm, and you are watching first part of What If Naruto was trained by QB after running away from Konoha. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Now, wasting no more time, let's start the story. I failed. He thought sadly, laying in my white hospital room. He had failed. Badly. Sakura would be forever mad at him over this. But it didn't matter. She'd eventually get over it. But he wasn't just beaten. No, he was destroyed. Sasuke still got away, while he lay helpless in the dirt, not even conscious. Having just woken up, Naruto was still a little groggy. He turned to look at his bedside table and groaned. And he was still sore. The vessel saw nothing there except for a bottle of sake with a note for someone named, Oscar Meyer. I wonder who that is. They must have gotten the wrong room. Nope. No flowers, no, get well, cards, nothing. Oh wait. No, the word demon was carved into the table. Okay, so someone visited him. I'll need to get that guy's address so I can beat the crap out of him. Or her. He added as an afterthought. Looking around the room, he noticed that there was nobody else in the room. He had a window and a door with a window, both bulletproof and unbreakable glass, he noticed, from the wire running through them both. How nice of them. What, no steel walls or 10-inch titanium steel door with time lock? Someone slipping up. He thought bitterly. Oh well. Naruto thought and turned up the bottle. It burned my throat a little, but still didn't taste too bad. Naruto can almost see why Ba. Chan liked this stuff so much. He thought as he drank myself into a quiet oblivion, going back to unconsciousness. Note to self. I can't handle alcohol. Was his last coherent thought as the blackness from the corner of his vision took him over. He awoke knee deep in water. Standing up, the boy looked around before realizing where he was. I've gotta get my mind out of the gutter. He chuckled slightly at my joke and started walking, looking for where he wanted to be. Finally he found it, the room of the all-powerful Kayubi. Naruto stepped in and immediately realized something was wrong. The bars weren't there. Kanichiwa kit. Came a voice to his right. He looked and saw what looked like. Well, it looked like a female Kayubi, human with a Santa hat on. His ears stuck out of two holes that were cut in the hat, and nine tails were swaying slightly. And Merry Christmas while I'm it. He said it he stuck a hat like his on Naruto's head. Kayubi. Why do you look like a girl? I do not look like a girl. How dare you insult the all-powerful. Crap. He yelled the last part as Naruto jerked the hat off his head, and long hair fell from the Kayubi's head. He could do nothing but stare. Fine, yes, I'm a girl. Any problems with that? The young boy couldn't help but stare at him. Er. Her. Of course, he was disturbed that there was a transvestite living in him. But still, she was beautiful. He couldn't help but glance down. She was a little under Tsunade's size. So, she wasn't sickeningly big, but wasn't like Sakura. Naruto then realized we came up to about the same height. She has about an inch on me. He also noticed the hair that fell down to just below her shoulder blades was red. Blood red. Her tails were the same color, and the tips were white. You gonna gawk all day? She asked him, grinning. He shook his head to bring him from his trance. So. Why? Exactly do you disguise yourself as a male again? He couldn't help but wonder. Thanks, you're not too bad looking yourself. Come see me again in a few more years. She said, making him blush slightly. Because people stare and ask me out, but don't fear me. However, if I'm a male, it's apparently a symbol of power to you stupid humans. He noticed something he'd missed before. Her whiskers showed up on her face as they did on mine. That's right. She has a face. Naruto continued to look her over again. She was in a dark red kimono that didn't look like it was for formal wear. No, this had to be just to make him stare. Her head had two fox ears sticking out of her hair. She had a face that didn't look kind, like he'd expected from her voice. Her eyes were red that had a subtle beauty to them. Then he noticed her tail swaying in a way that almost had him in a trance. So. Do you have a name that's not Kayubi? He asked, 
tearing his eyes away from her tail. Yeah. Yuzra Shiri, fuzz butt. He felt his face heat up and she laughed in a way that was almost unearthly. That laugh wasn't human that was for sure. Not angelic. Just. Different. That's just something that doesn't get old. My real name is Hitomi, pupil, given to girls with especially beautiful eyes. That's a pretty name. She grinned. It was supposed to be happy, but in a way, it looked like she was up to something. Her large canines didn't help. Looking at those, he also looked down and saw that she had claws. They were elegant and deadly looking at the same time. How this was possible, he really didn't know. So Kit. To what do I owe this pleasant surprise visit? She asked, that grin still on her face. I. Uh. Sorta found some sake on the table next to my bed and. Drunk yourself into oblivion? She finished for him. There might be hope for you yet. I also saw your fight with Sasuke. It was embarrassing. She said, switching to a commanding voice, her grin falling into a frown of disappointment like a lead weight in water. She walked up to him and poked him in the chest. You're weak. I won't have a weak vessel, you hear me boy? She poked him harder and harder as she said each of the last four words. The fourth poke sent him on his butt. The memories of that fight came flooding back to him. The hole in the chest, getting knocked around like a rag doll. Sure, he tried, but what did he do? Who was left standing? Who walked away? Not me. She was right, and it hit home, and Naruto swore his heart was being ripped apart. He was weak. Naruto realized that, and it hurt. Don't you start falling to pieces on me, kid. She said, squatting down to eye level with him. I'm gonna help you fix that. So you just pull yourself back together before I beat the crap out of you. Naruto still did nothing. She stood up and reared back a foot, then swung it forward, sending him flying. He bounced and skidded, not being able to control his body as it soared through the air. He finally stopped, after skidding the last 10 feet on his back. He knew he was bleeding, and he watched her walk up to him. Get up! She said coldly. He did nothing. I'll kick you again, get up! I can't. She looked at him, her cold expression turning to one of confusion. One of your tails is holding me down. She noticed the tail, and started to move it, except Naruto grabbed it. Looks soft. He started petting it, and suddenly heard a sound like a motor. Then he noticed it was coming from Hitomi. He grinned as she sat on him and continued purring. Finally, she laid down, using Naruto as her own personal pillow, and fell asleep. He felt himself blush deep red as she slept on. He let go of her tail and started scratching her at the base of her ears. Her purring doubled, before finally he quit, wanting to see what happened. She yawned and stretched in a cat. Like way, before looking up at her bed, her head on his chest still. She blushed deeply, as he already was blushing, and jumped up off him. Damn it Kit. I'm gonna kill you. Don't you ever touch my tails again, you hear me? She screamed. It wasn't a question. How long have I been in here anyway? Naruto said, as he looked around, before realizing his own stupidity. Of course there wasn't a clock in here. Probably about 15. 20 minutes in here. Outside, it's probably been about the same amount of time. He eyed her curiously. She noticed the look she was getting and continued. I can control how fast time goes in here as opposed to how fast it goes outside. So it can be 20 minutes in here, and 20 seconds out there, or 20 seconds out there, and 20 days in here. His mouth made an O form. Also, you shouldn't wake up from that sake for at least another hour. But we've gotta talk. So I'm gonna be a pain and fix the time. It's going to be an hour in here. But a day out there. She grinned her evil foxy grin at him, as his jaw dropped. This was unjust. So, what are we gonna talk about? He asked, after having recovered from his shock. Her grin only widened. Let's start with what bugs me the most. Those clothes. She said, pointing at him. They should be outlawed. As your new sensei, I want you to burn them. All of them. She said, her eye twitching slightly at the sight of his clothes. Actually, we're going to burn them. She said, walking out into the long hallway outside. He shrugged and followed her. She walked down corridors after corridor, each twisting them further and further into a twisted maze. 
Finally she stopped at a door. He grinned. There should only be about 5 minutes left for me in here. She laughed. More like about 50. Naruto stared at her, his jaw dropping slightly. She laughed harder. Just to bug you, I made it take longer for you to wake up. And. How much longer? Exactly? He said frowning. Not too much. Just about. Three hours. He groaned. She grinned and opened the door, and grabbed the front of his shirt before throwing him in. She walked in behind him and slammed the door shut. Turning around, she tackled him and pulled his shirt and pants off of him. There, that wasn't so bad was it? He was blushing deeply. He could feel my facing burning. I'm in my underwear and it's cold in here. I wish you wore briefs. He barely heard her mutter. Why? He asked, staring at her. She just shook her head and turned a little red. She walked over to her closet and threw a shirt, pants, titanium-backed gloves, and a mask at him. Put those on. Naruto stared at her. Why can't I wear my old clothes? Because I said so. Now put them on. She screamed, and there was a roaring noise as she screamed. He quickly obliged and put the clothes on. Now, when you wake up, you'll be wearing these. Look around the room when you wake up and you should find another gown. You're going to have to wear that as long as you're in the hospital. She walked over to the other side of the room and started pulling drawers open, apparently looking for something. She threw a scroll at him. Naruto was pulling a shirt over his head at the time, and got hit in the nose with it. Ow! He yelped, as his nose started to bleed. Her blood-red eyes started glowing as she rushed over to him. Basically, she was standing on one side of the room one moment, and then was in front of him before Naruto could even process the fact that she wasn't there anymore. She pushed him onto his back and held him down. Human. Blood. How I've wanted to taste it for so long. Naruto noticed her tail stiffen and her voice had a more demonic sound to it. Slowly, she licked the blood from his face, her claws digging to his chest as she drank his blood. He was too scared to move at that moment. He prayed for the nosebleed to stop. Fast. The more she drank, the more demonic looking she became. Finally, he felt more of her tongue on his top lip than he had before. Which must mean that he nosebleed had stopped. He watched as her demonic features faded. She stopped finally and stared at him. Oops. Oops. That was it. He'd better not let her know he was bleeding on his chest or. Naruto felt my face heat up again. Sorry about that, whenever I see human blood. As you just saw, I kinda sorta go into a demonic mode. She said. Then she promptly jumped up and turned back to her dresser, seeming to search for something again. However, she forgot about her mirror, and Naruto saw her blushing deeply. She finally turned around and walked over to him. While she was doing all this, he had finally pulled his pants on and was tying on the mask when she came up to him. Hey there. Kit. She said in a sweet, hypnotizing voice. She threw her arms around his waist. Naruto started blushing. Slowly she moved in towards his face, before she pulled away from him, holding a kanai in her hand. Thanks Kit. She said grinning. He felt stupid as he realized that she couldn't have kissed him anyway, because he had his mask on. He gasped as she took the kanai and tore it down both of her forearms. She quickly soaked each hand in blood before the wound and blood on her arms both disappeared. The blood on her hands was still there though. Take your shirt off. What? Take it off. She screamed, the roar reappearing in her voice. He quickly pulled the shirt over his head. Now pull down the mask. After he had done as she asked, she quickly slammed her hands into his chests on both abs, again on the seal on his stomach, and drew a kanji symbol on both of his cheeks. He looked down when she was done and realized that there were bloody handprints on his chest and stomach. He also assumed that the kanji on his cheeks was also blood. Suddenly, it started to sizzle as steam rose from where the blood was. Something's still missing. She said, ignoring his groans of pain from the burning blood on him. Aha. Uh -huh. I know what it is. With that, she quickly bit into his neck, easily drawing blood. She held her canines in his neck for a moment, then let him go. Okay, I'm done with y'all. She said, waving him off with her hand. You can put your shirt and mask back on if you want. What'd you do to me? 
Naruto yelled after the blood had quit sizzling and disappeared. The blood was so that now whenever you aren't here, I can still talk to you in your mind. That way I can train you. The bite on the neck. She snickered evilly. Well, that's a surprise. I won't tell you. You're gonna have to find out all by your lonesome. Hitomi had an evil grin pointed at him. So why did you attack Konoha? He asked suddenly. Her grin fell fast. She sighed. If I tell you. You're not gonna like it. Or me. She said sadly. She suddenly shook her head. No, I won't tell you. Maybe when you're older. But not now. You're better off not knowing for no. Anyway, it's time for you to wake up. Soccer has come to visit you. She said, brightening suddenly. His neutral face turned to one of sadness. Leave me in here. I can't face her. Just. Let me stay in here. Kit, I ain't having a wimpy vessel. Now, you're gonna buck up, go out there, face her, and move on. You hear me? Again, it wasn't a question. Wait. I have a question. He said, not looking her in the eye. She looked at him. What? What am I? He asked, seeming to steal himself before finishing the question. He still hadn't looked her in the eye. What do you mean? What am I? Am I a demon? Or a human? Or both? He asked. She grinned. Be proud. You're a full-blooded demon. He started at her confused. But my parents were. She cut him off. A few thousand generations back, a lesser demon was sealed within your clan. This demon allowed your clan to have unrivaled stamina, and the ability to quickly learn any jutsu. The only drawback was, if it was too easy, you can't do it. So, you actually have a bloodline. But not one like the Harunos, Hayugas, or Uchiha's bloodline. She said, grinning at his confused face. The Harunos? What's their bloodline? The pink hair. He asked grinning. She snickered. Hi. Their hair is a part of the bloodline. But luckily for the males, it only goes through the female side of the bloodline. But they also have an inner persona that can take over their body, take information from their conscious and subconscious mind and keep it. So if they're being tortured, they won't give information, because they can't. She said grinning. Naruto gaped. Don't look so surprised, I know you knew at least a minor part of that. I also know that you aren't as stupid as you act. Er look. She said, looking him in the eyes. Damn. You cheated. He said, glaring at her. She just stuck her tongue out. Naruto quickly reached out and grabbed it. You want to keep your fingers? You want to keep your fingers? She said, glaring at him. He just stuck his tongue out, but quickly pulled it back in before she could grab it. What's wrong? Fox got your tongue? Naruto snickered evilly. Okay let me P.U.D. at these U.A.Y., do you want to K.E.P. being a bi? Do you want to keep being a boy? She asked, eagerly flexing her fingers. He quickly let go. Ew. Fox spit. He wiped it on her. She brought her knee up and nailed him. Try that again, and there won't be a place to hit next time. She said glaring. Now, go see Sakura, she's about to walk out. She snapped her fingers and he was suddenly looking up at a ceiling. Naruto groaned. He was still sore from having his butt kicked. Sakura turned back and looked at him, clipboard in hand. Naruto? She said, turning to look at him. He stared back and nodded slightly. She suddenly walked over to him and punched him in the stomach. Where's Sasuke? She screamed, then punched him again. With Orochimaru by now. He said sadly. She punched him in the face this time. Why isn't he with US? Because he nearly killed me. I couldn't get him. He said, not portraying any emotion. Liar. She screamed. You let him go didn't you? You let him keep going because you were jealous. He was better than you, so you just let him go. Then you beat Y-O-U-R-E-S-E-L-F up just to make it look like you fought. But really, you just let him go so you wouldn't have any competition. You just wanted to make yourself look good, and now you don't have anyone to show how weak you were like he did. He was growling, and it was quickly getting louder. The villagers are right. You are a demon. She said, glaring at him, her eyes full of hate. 
That was the final straw. She made to axe kick him in the stomach, but he caught it. Let me tell you something Pinky. He said, clenching his hand over her foot. She twitched a little. But first, I want to know. Where did you hear that? Was it you who carved demon into that table? Or do you know why they call me demon? Who didn't hear it? I actually heard it when they rioted and tried to kill you. I think I was eight at the time. No, I didn't carve demon into the table, Dr. Eisen did that, and I don't know why they call you a demon. Sorry, couldn't help the bleach guy. I hate him. By the way, don't own bleach either. She said sneering at him. He tightened his grip on her foot even more. Let me tell you a story. The Kayubi wasn't killed by the Yandaimi. She couldn't be killed. Her name wasn't even Kayubi. It was Hitomi. Hitomi couldn't be killed, so he had to seal it in a baby whose chakra coils weren't fully developed. He finished there, but didn't let go of her foot. How do you know it's a she? And her name's Hitomi. She gasped as she realized how he knew. You. He just nodded. You. You are a demon. With that he lost all control and sent her into a wall. That was all he could take from her. He hit the nurse button on his bed, and instantly a nurse was there. Actually, it was Tsunade. What's going on in here? She screamed. Get that demon out of here. Sakura screamed back. Tsunade's eyes widened. You told her? She said, looking at Naruto. He just nodded and stood up. Having forgotten to get a new gown, being that he also didn't have a choice at the time, he was still wearing the black clothes Hitomi had given him. He pulled up his mask and walked out. Naruto wait. She said, grabbing his shoulder. He stopped. I'll let you go home. But this doesn't leave this room. None of this happened. I'll kill you. Shut up. With that he punched her in the stomach, efficiently knocking her out. Naruto. Tsunade yelled at him. He looked at her. What the hell is wrong with you? She took it one step too far. Now, I need to see a Dr. Aizen. He said grinning. She just pointed down the hall towards the break room. A few minutes later, she saw Dr. Aizen go flying down the hallway. Naruto walked back home, and anyone who said demon got punched. He was in a bad mood. Sure, he could deal with the villagers, but not when a friend turns on him like that. He then turned and went over to the Hokage Tower. He needed out of this place. Hey Naruto, guess what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to read the author's note at the bottom, because it's important and involves the readers. Naruto and Hitomi make gay. Like poses and continue with the story. Ba. Chan. He said slamming his hands on her desk. I want out of this village. Send me on a training mission or something. Anything, just get me out. She sighed and put his head in her hand for a second before looking back up at him. I'm sorry Naruto, I can't. The council says that you can't so much as be taken off active duty for a second. They've locked your status because you couldn't bring back Sasuke. You can't even quit. They said if you do, it'll be considered treason, and they'll execute you. She said, the sadness evident in her voice. They can't do that. Who's gonna stop them? She said, it was then he realized she was right. Who was going to stop them? They're the top level of the Konoha government. He sighed in defeat. Out of, the kindness of their hearts, she scoffed, they've allowed you the day off. Have fun. She said. It was evident she wasn't happy. He opened her window before she could say anything else, and jumped. Using his chakra, he landed lightly, and kept going. Your father wouldn't have allowed this came a voice. He realized it was Hitomi's and remembered that she had made it so that they could communicate mentally. Who was my father anyway? The Yandaimi. He could have gotten them to change their minds. Sadly, they nobody likes Tsunade like they did with the Yandaimi. She said, but her voice had a hint of sadness this time. Naruto was shocked. The Yandaimi was his father? He looked up at the Hokage monument and saw his dad looking down at him. Naruto couldn't look him in the eye. Sure, it was card, but to him, it was his dad. Naruto decided that instead of going home, he was going to the forest to train. He changed pads again, and headed towards the closest training ground. An. That's important. I need to know about how often people want me to update. 
I can do everything but hourly or less. If I do it every day, I'll do it at noon until school starts back. Just give me a time frame when you people want me to update. And for anyone that wants me to, no, I won't load the whole story at once. Hanada was walking down the street, looking for her teammates, when she saw a black clad figure and followed him for a while, before realizing it was Naruto. So she followed him at a closer range than before, due to the fact that she had nothing to fear. She saw he was headed to a training ground. When he got here, he stopped and sat down, before suddenly making a cage bushin. Then, the cage bushin turned red before turning into a knee-high single-tailed fox. It started skipping around before stopping and looking at Naruto. It yipped, and Naruto pulled out a kanai. Hanada gasped, thinking he was going to kill it. But instead he cut his palm and dabbed a finger in the blood before drawing on his arms and ankles with it. She blushed as he pulled his shirt off and drew symbols, kanji, and designs across himself, before making seals. Tiger, ram, rat, monkey, ox, snake, hare, dragon, and ended with another tiger. The blood glowed blue before it turned black and faded. Then he wrote the kanji for 100 over all the places he wrote his blood on. Then he did another tiger seal and groaned. Naruto made an attempt at standing, but fell out on his face. There was a dent in the ground where he landed. That was when she realized that he made weight seals across his body. That way he didn't have to wear weights. And they were a hundred pounds each. Hanada added it up in her head and realized that they all equaled around 500 pounds. The fox yipped again, and she watched as he laid there, trying to get up. But the weight was too much, so he couldn't even get his arms in a position to push himself up. She came back the next day, and found the fox asleep, as well as Naruto. He hadn't budged. This continued until the third day, when she saw him with his arms up, pushing himself up slowly. She watched until he was finally standing upright. She smiled and walked away, going to look for her teammates again. Naruto had finally made it to the training ground he found a tree and leaned his back against it, before making a cage bushin and thinking to Hitomi, I've got an idea. Before transferring the demon fox to his bushin. Of course, it was only a small bit of the power she originally had, but it was still enough. She jumped and ran around, did a few flips, and sat down, looking at him before yipping a thanks, but strangely, he could understand her. Thanks Kit. If I can go to my human form, or when you visit me again, I think I'll have to express my thanks. In a better way. She winked at him, making Naruto blush a little. So what do you want me to do, sensei? He thought, without stopping to wonder if she could even hear him. I'll give you the knowledge you need to do this. You're going to make weights. Suddenly, he knew what she was talking about, and how to do it. He pulled a kanai out, cut his palms, and started making the needed seals to create the weights. Once he finished, he went through some seals, and then marked the weight on each that she told him to put. Sealing it with another hand seal, he instantly felt his body sink into the dirt slightly. When Naruto tried to stand up, he fell flat on his face. Once you can get up, we'll move on. Was all Hitomi said. So he struggled. By the second day, around 10 probably, he heard footsteps, but was too sunk into the ground to look up. By 5 he'd gotten his hands in the push-up position. And finally, on the third day, he was standing upright. Hitomi. I'm up. Was all he said. Hitomi looked at him through sleepy eyes, having just been awoken by the sound of his voice, and grinned at him in a fox-like way. I swear, you're gonna make me proud Kit. She said simply. He blushed, and looked up seeing Hinata walk off. Don't Kit. She said, as he started to take a step towards her. She'll want to talk, and you don't have time. You're in training, she said simply. Why do you call me Kit? He asked, looking at her. Would you prefer Kit? Goshuji, husband. She asked grinning evilly. Naruto turned a little red. It's a term of affection. Of course, if you want I could call you Naruto. Koibito, lover. Naruto turned a dark crimson color at that one. She started laughing. Kit'll work. He said, stuttering slightly. Good, now that we've got that sorted out, go home. He nodded and tried to take a step. And nearly fell on his face again, having forgotten about his weights. Damn it. He screamed. Once you get to Tsunade's office, we'll move on. She said grinning. Hitomi got up, and followed him. 
After about two hours, he finally got up to her office. He was worn out, but he couldn't sit down. Opening the door, he hobbled in, and closed it. Tsunade looked up and saw Naruto and a fox, that yipped at him, before he did a few hand signs, and the whole room glowed a neon green color before fading. Kanichiwa ba. Chan. He said grinning. She roared and punched him, expecting him to go flying. But instead she was slid backwards a few feet, while Naruto slid back about six inches. Huh? Tsunade stared at Naruto with a deer. In. The. Headlights look. I weigh around 620 pounds right now, Ba. Chan. I don't think that's gonna work. He said, laughing slightly. She, he jerked his thumb towards the fox, says that I need all this extra weight and made me haul myself from training ground aid to here. It's a half mile. He yelled the last sentence at the fox, who was suddenly eye level with Naruto. You're gonna thank me by next week. Hitomi said grinning. She bowed to Tsunade. Kanichiwa ba. Chan, as Kit calls you. Kit? Isn't that a fox term? Hitomi was grinning, her large canines showing, and was flexing her claws slightly, attracting Tsunade's attention to them. You're Hitomi. Of course, according to all your damn books I'm Kayubi. You've really gotta change those. I don't go around calling you all humans. Well. Actually I do, but the point is, that's not right. She said, pointing a finger at Tsunade, who was staring at her, gaping, then turned and hit Naruto in the face, sending him on his butt, and cracking her floor. One floorboard even shot up and got stuck in the concrete ceiling above their heads. Ah. Uh. B.A.A. Chan. I just got up. It took me three days to stand up. He yelled, trying to stand up. Finally, Hitomi took pity on him, and lifted him up by the shirt collar like he weighed nothing. He huffed. That's not right. But yes, I am the Kayubi, also known as Hitomi, sensei of Kit here. She said, jerking her thumb at Naruto. I demand that he be released on a dual objective mission. One objective is to train and get stronger. The other is to use that training to capture and return Sasuke. She said simply. Oh, and Naruto, for now, you can release those seals. He screamed in Arigato and formed a ram seal. Whoa. That's weird. I feel like I'm as light as a feather. You might as well be. Your body is now used to about. Oh say. 150 pounds of extra weight. She said grinning. Tsunade grabbed him by the front of his shirt. You let her out? She screamed in his face. What gave you that bright idea to break the seal placed and let her out? Were you dropped on your head as a child? Naruto pushed her away. Yes, it wasn't my idea, yes. But, if you'll look at her tail, you'll see she's only got one. The other eight are stored away in what's left of the seal. So, even if she did go on a rampage, it would be easy to stop her. Second, she's not going to do anything. Tsunade wasn't convinced, but she decided to tolerate her. Fine, but I still can't let Naruto go out of the village. He can't even do a high-ranking D mission right now. They all have to be of the lowest pay. Naruto's jaw dropped, while the Kayubi sighed. Fine. See ya. Was all she said, as she grabbed Naruto, whose seat's legs snapped on the spot and dragged him out of the room, after activating his weights for him. When they left, her room glowed red. Tsunade realized that they had soundproofed her room. So now what are we gonna do? Naruto asked Hitomi. She grinned. We're gonna go pack your bags and get a good night's rest. She yipped, now in her fox form. He heard a villager mutter something. A demon fox and another fox. They deserve each other in the deepest, hottest part of hell. Naruto screamed, and tackled the man. The man screamed as his ribs broke, due to the 600-pound teenager on his chest. Naruto slowly got back on his feet, and made it to his apartment. When he did, Hitomi lead him to his room. Naruto had a voice in the back of his head that said it was supposed to be the other way around, but when he got in there, he found all of his clothes being burned. All of his jumpsuits were now gone, and on his bed were clothes he was wearing, except now they had the red Uzumaki spiral on the back. Okay, you pack those, I'll get the crap from your drawers. Naruto blinked. How about we do it the other way around? My boxers are in there. 
So? I've watched you grow up through your own eyes. There's nothing in there I haven't seen before. Naruto blushed as he caught the double meaning to it. She just laughed. Turning serious again, she looked at his clock, okay, it's 3 o'clock now. We don't have to leave for another 9 hours. Turn off your weights, we've got work to do. He nodded and turned them off, before running into the kitchen and getting food for his stomach that had been empty for two days. In those nine hours, one of which was spent eating, he learned to turn into his full demon form, which she told him was extremely hard, but found out after he was finished, they were the easiest thing to do for a demon, but she knew if she told him that, he wouldn't try as hard, thus making him have more difficulty with it. Right now, if someone looked outside they would see two red foxes running through the streets, at a breakneck speed, towards the west side gate. One was blood red, the other was an orange. Red hybrid color. The lighter red one suddenly stopped and yipped. The darker red one barked back, with a more commanding back. Lighter fox just stuck its tongue out and jumped up some stairs that went up the side of an apartment complex. Darker fox growled and followed its partner. The light fox suddenly molded into a teen boy. The darker one molded into a beautiful young woman. Naruto and Hitomi stood at Aruka's doorstep. Naruto knocked, and they waited a few minutes before he opened the door. Naruto? Was all he got out before he was tackled inside of his house, and Hitomi came in behind him, quickly sealing the door shut, and soundproofed the room. Uruka quickly jumped up and pulled a kanai out of seemingly nowhere. Who are you? He said, getting in a fighting stance. Naruto just grinned. It's me Uruka. Sensei. He said, walking up to him. Prove it. He said, still not dropping his stance. The first day I was at the academy, I got bored and turned your clothes hot pink. He said, laughing a little. That just didn't stop being funny. Aruka frowned and tossed his kanai onto his coffee table. So what was that all about? And who's she? I'm Hitomi. Or better know as the Kayubi. She said, with a sad look on her face. She remembered this one. His parents had sacrificed themselves for a friend. She suddenly walked up and hugged him. She whispered only two words in his ear. I'm sorry. Naruto's face was one of confusion, while Aruka's was one of fear. Why? Why did you kill them? Aruka asked, talking about his parents. I didn't mean to. I knew they had a kid, so I tried to avoid them. But to save a comrade, they jumped in the way of my fire and took the hit instead of the one I aimed it for. She said sadly. They broke apart, and Uruka looked at the two of them. You never answered my question. What is this all about? We sealed your door so that nobody breaks in, and soundproofed the room so nobody will hear what I'm about to say. Uruka nodded silently. Me and her leaving. We should be back in a few years. She's going to train me until I have the power to wield more than the two tails I have now. Also with making me all around stronger. After that's done, I'm going to get Sasuke and come back. If I kill Orochimaru, that's just a bonus. I need you to tell Tsunade what I just told you. She already knows about Hitomi. The said girl suddenly glowed red, before turning into a bushin who poofed into a plume of smoke. The room glowed red, and the door glowed purple. It's not safe to talk anymore. The chakra supply I gave her ran out. He added, looking at his sensei's confused face. Now I've gotta leave. Bye sensei. He said, before Uruka hugged him. When did you find a brain? Uruka asked. I always had one. A dumb demon has a chance in life, because nobody accepts anything amazing from an idiot. But a smart demon doesn't have a chance. Naruto said simply. With that, he turned and walked out the door. Uruka watched in shock at the closed door, before sitting on his couch and running what just happened through his head again. Okay, so the kid who was always Adobe is going to leave town, train until he's probably a nine-tailed demon, defeat Sasuke, probably kill Orochimaru, and come back. Where he's going to probably die. Uruka got up and ran for the Hokage's office. He had to tell her before someone sent out Hunter Nins. After he got away from the complex a little, Naruto created another Bushin, and turned it into Hitomi. Good lord Kit. How much chakra did you give that last Bushin? She asked, bug-eyed. I only had enough to seal the Hokage's office, and enough to keep me out of chakra exhaustion. The rest all went into that bushin. 
he said, grinning. You're stupid. I was wondering how that thing was holding out so long. She screamed, before Naruto pinched her lips together. Quiet, remember? She nodded, and they both turning into their single-tailed full demon forms, before running at the western gate. They had already wasted half an hour. They had to get out now. The next day, an alarm was heard throughout Konoha. An alarm calling all shinobi to the Hokage Tower. All shinobi, and even some nearby civilians, gathered around the dome. Like Hokage Tower. I'm sorry to report. Tsunade sniffed and wiped the tears from her eyes. I'm sorry to report that last night, at 2400 hours. Uzumaki Naruto ran from this village, without mine nor the council's permission. His classmates gasped. As well as the Junin who knew him. If he is found, he must be bound and be in one piece and alive. He is to then be brought back to be interrogated, and then he will be. She choked on her words for a second before trying again. He will be interrogated and executed. Sakura gasped. No. That couldn't be true. Naruto. Not around? Nobody would see him doing laps around Konoha or flying across the rooftops anymore. No that couldn't be true. Naruto wasn't supposed to leave. He was supposed to stay there and be mad at her for yelling at him. But he wasn't supposed to leave. I don't think I've said this yet, so I will now. Thanks everyone for all of the reviews. Seriously, I don't usually get a response like I've gotten for this FIC. Only one other story's gotten this kind of feedback. This story's only been up for a week, and already I've gotten 62 reviews, and more hits than I do words for the overall story. At this moment, there are 10,108 hits. Split it up in twos. 10 and 8. Every chapter has over 1,000 hits except for chapter 5, and that's because I just posted it. So thanks everyone for the positive response. I'm going and adding details beforehand now, and fixing my errors in response to the people who pointed out how often I mess up. Also, Tsunade wasn't fake crying, and as a thanks for all the reviews and hits, I've added a half page to the fight scene in this chapter, as well as posting a day early. I would've added more, but then it'd have been too dragged out. Sorry for the long AN. My Sacrifice. Chapter 6. It had been a little over a day since they'd left Konoha. Naruto had long exhausted his chakra, and yet, somehow, here he was, still running across the tree branches. How much further? Naruto asked. Just a little more. Was Hitomi's reply. We've got to get out of Fire Nation first. They won't believe that we got out in one night, and think that we're still around Konoha somewhere. Also, we need a change of course. She said, waiting for Naruto to get all that. Then she turned and went southwest for a few hundred yards, before finally stopping and landing on the ground below, panting. That. Was. A. Long. Run. Naruto panted at her. She just grinned and stuck her hand out. Kanai. He frowned and handed her one. Whenever she had a kanai, it scared Naruto because he never knew what she was going to do. She drew it across her hand, and let it bleed into a puddle in her palm. Then, she cupped her hands, and let the puddle grow until it was a good-sized amount in her hands. She suddenly threw it out in an open area free of everything but grass. Hitomi. Chan, Naruto had taken to calling her that in their training. What was the point of that? He asked, but was answered by the ground rumbling as a slab of earth came up, making the mouth of a cave. This, Kit, is my family's training home. She said grinning. Naruto tilted his head to one side, trying to figure it out. It's got to have my, or my family's blood to open, but I don't have any family, so my own blood has to do all the opening. So. We're gonna live. In a cave until I can find Sasuke? Till we find Sasuke, and yes. She started walking in there, and Naruto, not wanting to be left behind, quickly followed her. After he walked in, the mouth of the cave sank back in, and instantly lights came on inside the cave. The first thing he noticed as he followed her was that it was huge. He couldn't see the top of the cave, despite the lights. Walking along, he saw an area branch off, that looked like a massive battlefield. Hitomi must have noticed the look on his face because she said, that's our training field. You're going to end up treating that like your own bedroom, because you're gonna spend most of your time in there. As they walked on, he took notice of the making of the cave. It seemed that it wasn't dug out, but instead compact dirt. 
It was as though an incredible force just separated the dirt with enough force to turn it to stone, which was what had happened. They kept walking, and on the way, they passed a bathroom, a weight room, for our half-demon forms, she told him as they walked by, a kitchen, and finally, they reached what looked like a dead end, except with a room on the left and right, and one in front of them. She pointed at the right side rooms. That's yours. I'm right across the hall. She said, walking into her own room. You've got two days. Learn the layout of the place and rest up. Meanwhile. I'm out of chakra. Was all she got out before she disappeared in a plume of smoke. Well, I got us here anyway. Was the last he heard before he collapsed in the middle of the floor from chakra exhaustion. When he opened his eyes, he was in a room this time. Looking around, he realized where he was. Hitomi's room. He was actually quite comfortable. Last time, he didn't notice how springy the floor was. Or how warm it was. Or that it was laying on his chest. Looking down he saw Hitomi, resting comfortably with her head on his chest, dead asleep. Naruto turned deep red, and sighed. Well. There was nothing he could do now. She was probably exhausted from that run too. He woke again later, to find that they had changed positions. Her back was against him, but this time he realized that she was awake. She heard his breathing increase a little, and grinned, knowing he had woken up. You know, you gotta visit me more often. She said, turning over to face him and grinned wider at his now red face. You sure blush a lot around me. You do know that right? She said, and had to hold in her laughter as his face turned even darker red, a feat she hadn't thought was possible. I wonder why. Surely it isn't that Kit isn't used to any female attention. She put her hand on her chest and gasped. No. Not someone as cute as you, Kit, Hitomi was about to burst out laughing at this point. When she pinched and pulled his cheek, while saying her last sentence, the look on his face finally did it. She burst out laughing. Naruto just frowned. Not. Funny. Was all he ground out, too busy willing the blush away to say anything else. Suddenly, his blush faded as a serious look came across his face. How strong will I be by the time we finish training? He asked. Hitomi sighed. Honestly. I don't know. You'll be stronger, I can tell you that. We should at least double your chakra supply right now. 500 pound weights will be nothing by the time we're done. You'll learn what you need for becoming Hokage. I'll have to teach you about sealing so Orochimaru can't five. Prom seal us again. She growled his name a little. That had seriously hurt. She said all of this slowly, trying to not overdo how strong he should be. And when you wake up, I'll have a surprise for you, that we can't do in here. What is it? He asked, nearly bouncing on his side. Hitomi stopped him before he shook the bed down. Now if I told you, it wouldn't be a surprise would it? She said, before a mischievous smile came onto her face that showed that she was truly the Kyubi. But before I'll train you, I first want you to pay me. Naruto groaned and reached for his back pocket, but Hitomi grabbed his wrist. Not exactly what I was talking about. She said, her grin widening as she pulled his mask down slowly. I don't want you to wear this unless we leave the cave. Naruto nodded slowly, his face turning a little pink at her actions. Then it turned blood red as she slowly moved her head towards his. Slowly coming closer, and finally finding her mark, she kissed Naruto full on the lips. She slowly deepened the kiss, letting him get used to it. He did, rather quickly, and kissed her back. She nibbled on his bottom lip, causing him to gasp, but then she stopped, panting slightly. Well damn. Looks like you're waking up. She said, pointing to his hand that was fading in and out of existence. I'll take that as pay. She said, as he finally faded away, and opened his eyes to a black ceiling, that he still couldn't see. He sighed. If only he hadn't woken up. Wait, what would have happened had he not woken up? He blushed again over the thought. I really do that too much. If I'm not careful I'll start stuttering and pushing my fingers together whenever I say anything. Or possibly grow a Bayakugan. He chuckled at his own joke, before getting up and walking down the cave to the kitchen. Hey Kit. Let me out. She said in his head. He just grinned. Why should I? Cuz I said so that's why. Now let me out of here now if you ever want to pay rent again. She screamed in his head. 
he quickly made a cross symbol with his fingers and make a cage bushin. Then he sent his demon chakra and Hitomi in it. Much better. So help me if you do that again, you're paying rent in cold hard cash, you hear me? She yelled. He nodded quickly. Now, let's go fix something to eat. I'm starved. Is that even possible? He asked, looking at her. You're a bushin, with no physical body at the moment because it's sealed inside my stomach, and in my mind I'm assuming you don't have to eat. She grinned sheepishly. Well. Not exactly. But food sounds good. She said, pushing him in the back towards the kitchen. Plus, the sooner we eat, the sooner we can start the torture. She coughed. I mean, training, we can start the training. They finally made it down to the kitchen, and she pushed him down in a chair. Since you paid rent so well, I thought I'd make breakfast. Hitomi then turned around and started pulling things out of cabinets, boiling water, pulling bowls out, tossed Naruto some chopsticks that landed where his hand was a second earlier, and stuck into the table. Amazing thing is, they were wooden chopsticks. After a quick, sorry, kit. She continued. Finally, after about 10 more minutes, she sat a bowl of miso ramen in front of him. Itadakimasu. They both said, before they started eating. Naruto got one mouth full of noodle, and instantly decided he was in heaven. He didn't know what it was, but this was amazing. Holy crap. He said to her. She smiled. I'm going to take that as a compliment. She said grinning. He nodded vigorously. How do you get it so good? Toilet water. She said, and started snickering at the look that came across his face. He stuck his tongue and she grabbed it. Well now, what do we have here? A chance to get even maybe? She grinned evilly. Ah. Oh. Mad T-O-O-N-G-E Mad T-O-O-N-G-E. Sorry, didn't catch that? What's wrong anyway? Kitsune got your tongue? She snickered at her own little joke. I want my Roman. He more or less begged. She sighed and let go. You're no fun. You'll get over it. He grinned before setting his chopsticks down, and turning up the whole bowl, not wanting to take the time to eat it with chopsticks. He sat it down and went to get him another bowl. After two bowls for Hitomi, and ten for Naruto, they finally moved on to training. Walking down towards the training room, Hitomi turned to him. Remember what happened last time you got a nosebleed? She asked, her face turning a little pink at the memory of what she did. Surprisingly, Naruto didn't blush. He just nodded. That's what happens when I see human blood. I'm more or less like a vampire. Except I'll kill you and eat you, not suck your blood. So, while we train, if you're bleeding, don't let me see. I'm going to try to work with as little sharp objects as possible, but we're going to have to work with swords eventually. She said, biting her lower lip in worry. The god in the training room and she turned to Naruto. Kit, I'll tell you right now. Don't expect any mercy from me. Now, activate your weights. She said, and frowned when he didn't do anything but grin stupidly. They already are. Okay, I'll need you to explain this to me, because I'm confused. How can you move so casually if they're activated? I didn't turn them off when we were running from Konoha. She slapped her forehead with her hand. So, if we were attacked by Hunter. Nin, you were just gonna tackle them or something. Hi. She slapped her forehead again, and dragged it down her face. Fine. Well, let's see how well you work in them. With that, she punched him, sending him flying. He quickly got on his feet and ran at her. She noticed that they were activated like he said, because he would normally go faster. He threw a punch, which she blocked, and blocked the kick that followed it. They sprung apart, before charging again, swiping at each other. Hitomi caught him in the stomach, and he doubled over as the air left his body. Staying in a sparring stance, she waited for him to catch his breath again. He stood up straight, and copied her stance, before reverse side kicking her head. It was a fast kick, and sent her sprawling, but it didn't have the effect it did when she returned the favor, slamming his back into the wall. She didn't waste time in charging him again, and grabbing the front of his shirt, throwing him back across the room. He laid on the ground, as she walked up to him. Come on and get up, I didn't hit you that hard. He grunted as he slowly stood up. He tried to sweep her feet out from under her, but he didn't move fast enough and was sent skidding across the room. He got up and charged her again, this time with a Rasengan. 
He thrust it at her arm, which she moved, and he turned in mid-air to try and hit her back. She set some chakra in her hand to spin in the same direction as the Rasengan, and stole it from him, before charging it with some of her own chakra and slamming it into his stomach. Tomorrow he would bear a spiral-shaped bruise there. He slammed into the wall again, kicking up some debris. He stood up and had an idea. However, he had to do it before the dust cleared. Naruto charged and punched at Hitomi, who put an arm up to block it. Suddenly, Shuriken shot out and nearly took out Naruto, who knew they were coming, but ducked just in time. He thought she would have dodged too. But he started in shock at her shuriken impaled body laying on the ground. She wasn't breathing. Quickie an. Before people ask, the reason why Hitomi didn't poof away is because she's almost living in that body. There's only a few things that keep her from being a regular Bushin. Naruto quickly got over to her, and started pulling the shuriken out of her body. He closed her nose and started breathing for her, as he prayed that she would breathe again. Then he found out that the ceiling was in fact made of rock, just like he'd thought. You bastard. I'll kill you. What made you think that it was a good idea to throw shuriken at me? For that, you're doubling you weights. One of those THINGSS went into my lung. I was dead. If I were human, I would have died, not even if you were breathing for me or not. You're lucky my powers keep healing me once I die or I'd come back just to kill you. At this point, he fell from the ceiling he stood up and slowly walked over to her. Hitomi. Sensei? He asked questioningly. He made a ram seal disable the weights. What? She snapped. He ran over and hugged her and silent tears rolled down his face. Hitomi stiffened. I thought I'd killed you. He said quietly, before he buried his head in her shoulder, his sobs no longer silent. She stared at him in shock. She'd known Naruto all his life, and she had never, ever seen him cry. Hitomi got over her shock, and relaxed as she put her arms around him. Kit, it's okay. She cooed quietly. After a few minutes, she scooted them back to a wall, and rested her back against that while she waited for his sobs to subside. Hitomi continued cooing soft words of comfort until they subsided. He sat up and rolled over, and was resting with his back against the wall next to her. Trainings cancelled for the day. We'll start again tomorrow. There's not much to do here except SLE. Sleep, yeah I know. That's why I cancelled it. You need the break. Now come on. She cut him off, standing up, then pulling Naruto up with her by the hand. Hitomi led him down the hall until they came to her room. He noticed it was nicely decorated, and looked exactly like the room she had in his head. She led him over to the bed and pushed him down on it. She popped his shoes off, and her own, then walked around to the side and got in next to him. I thought you'd like some company. If you wake up first, wake me up and we'll finish training. She set her back against his chest and pulled one of his arms over her shoulder. Hitomi turned her head to kiss his cheek, but noticed he was already asleep. Smiling slightly to herself, she turned over and went to sleep herself. Naruto jumped up out of bed. He dreamed of being in a theater where a giant skeleton wearing a tuxedo had been trying to get him and he'd forgotten he was a shinobi, so he had to try to beat the skeleton to the door, but that stupid skeleton kept beating him to it. Plus it was scary looking. Yes, I really did have a dream like that. I nearly fell off my top bunk. By the way, I don't own the nightmare before Christmas. He looked around, and saw that Hitomi wasn't there. He got up and put his sandals back on. Naruto stood up and walked down the hall. His bedroom door was open, so she wasn't in there. The library door was still closed, and Hitomi told him that if she was in there, she'd leave the door open. He continued walking down the hall. The bathroom door was open and empty. Kitchen was empty. So that just left the training room. Naruto walked in and found her training. It was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen. There were about 50 logs set on their ends around her. Each kick broke it into splinters before it could even move backwards from the force. But that wasn't what was so amazing. It was the way she moved. It was as though Hitomi was dancing. Each move gracefully performed, as she whipped her feet around like a helicopter, cutting through three logs. The punches were thrown out, and swung over her head, getting ready to hit another log, each beautifully done. Finally, she blew out a giant blast of chakra, releasing all of her tenketsu at once. She stood there panting, the wood completely destroyed. 
He felt her chakra supply about to run out, so he fed her a bit more to keep her around. She slowly stopped panting and he saw a confused look run across her face. She must not have noticed him yet. So he did what he knew would be the right thing to do in this situation. Naruto tackled Hitomi who squealed. Yes. The almighty Kayubi no Kitsune, monstrous destroyer, demon of Konoha, mistress of pain. Squealed. She turned around and slapped Naruto across the face. Hentai. She screamed at him. He spun off like a boomerang, and even came back after hitting a sidewall, skidding to a stop where he started. OWWWWW. Naruto moaned as he laid there. She put her foot on his back and held him down. You freaking sicko. Do you realize where your hands went? Naruto thought back, but couldn't remember. Nope. I don't believe this. My own student feels me up and doesn't even realize it. She muttered under her breath. He thought a little harder and turned dark crimson. She was right. Uh. Damn it. That's the last straw. I'm doubling your weights. With that, she went through some seals too fast for him to see, and Naruto instantly felt his weights double. Get up. She said, looking down at him harshly. I'm sorry Hito. Sensei. I swear I didn't mean to. He yelled, not able to move anything but his neck. Hitomi was grinning at the fact that he couldn't move, but she turned deep red at her new nickname. Since when did they have pet names? Oh right. Kit. Yeah, now you're sorry. Well you can be sorry in your head. She snapped her fingers and the surrounding area flickered a few times before it became the dark damp place inside his head. I've set it up so that every hour in here is only a second outside. So you've got plenty of time to get up. Every physical movement you make in here, you make outside. She said grinning. He started struggling to push himself up. His head was stuck to its side right now, and he noticed something. Where were the bars? Hey Hito. Chan? He started, waiting for her to give a response to show her heard him. Hum? What happened to the bars? She turned to look at him. You mean? You don't remember? She said, looking at him in surprise. He started to shake his head, but realized he couldn't, so he voiced that fact that he didn't. You did it. You came in here and said, Kayubi no Kitsune, I, your jailer, Naruto Uzumaki, release you from the first seal. You shall still be bound by the second seal unless a lethal attack comes to the second seal. When you said that, it officially released the first seal. He frowned. I must have missed the memo on that one. I don't remember a thing. He said, frowning, then remembered why he was there and continued trying to get up. Now that I think of it. Your eyes did have this blank look to them. She gasped. Orochimaru. I bet he set up a plan so that when the five-pronged seal was released, a mental image of you was projected here to let me out. Naruto sighed. Now I have a reason to thank him. So the only way to let you out is to be killed by a blow to my seal. Well crap. He said, groaning. Finally, he screamed in annoyance and blasted chakra through his tenketsu in his arms. When he did, it blasted him up like a rocket and he was standing upright. Hitomi grinned and clapped. I was wondering if you'd ever think of that. Good job. Only problem is, you're going to be alone once you get out of here. That blast just destroyed me. She said. Naruto came to a little while later, to find himself in his room. He found that Hitomi was sleeping, as she had said she would from exhaustion from her training this morning, due to the light snores coming from his mind. He got up and created a bushin, and told it to get into the bed. After it fell asleep, he pushed Hitomi into the bushin, and grinned. If things went according to plan, she would think she escaped. He left the room, pulling the door shut, and snickered evilly, before turning and going into the library. If he kept studying ceiling, he might be able to make that a reality, and not a prank. Hitomi yawned and stretched. Feel around for Naruto, she found he wasn't there. Groaning, she opened her eyes and looked around. Wait. This wasn't her room. Or Naruto's head. She frowned catching on. Naruto's trying to play pranks again. I'll kill him. She thought as she swung her legs out of bed. Walking out, she saw the library door was open, and walked in. She heard a book slam from the other side of the library, so she headed that way. When Hitomi walked up to him, she noticed his nose started bleeding. 
Why are you naked? Naruto screamed. She looked down, then back up at him. Because you did the bush and wrong, dipshit. Now, give me your shirt. What? Why? Gimme. Go get one of your own. Look, I only wear clothes so you won't freak out. Now give me your shirt, unless you want me to wear it with you still in it. His nose shot out some more blood, as he pulled it over his head and tossed it to her. Have fun. Oh I will. Hitomi pulled the shirt over her head. Suddenly, she tackled him. Your nose is bleeding. She said, growling slightly, before licking it off. To make matters worse, or better. He could see down her shirt. Actually, he could see down his shirt, that she was wearing, but the point was, he was just tackled by a hot naked seductress, who was licking the blood off his nose. Boy was he screwed. Naruto paled slightly at the choice of words. That shot a last gush of blood out, then it stopped. She got off him and frowned. Then stepped on his stomach. Quit staring sicko. She said grinning. Then turned around and walked out, leaving Naruto shirtless. Naruto turned and walked back to the table he was sitting at, before opening the book. A book on seal breaking to be specific. After a few minutes he slammed the book shut. Damn it. He cried. There was no way to do it. His father's seal was too strong. The only way to break the seal was to take a fatal blow to it. But because of Hitomi's powers, that wasn't possible. Speaking of Hitomi, she walked in just as that thought finished. Put your little bookies up and come eat. Then she became serious. We've gotta talk. With that, she turned and walked down the hallway. Naruto go up and followed her. The little adventure lasted all the way to the kitchen. He found some rice balls and sat down at the table. She sat down across from him. You know how I told you about you being a full demon between me and your dad right? He nodded. She opened her mouth to say something, but her cut her off. I'm assuming it was a weaker Kyubi than you, but had a high IQ. Her eyes widened slightly. How'd he figure that out? She'd searched his mind the second she was released, and found no one but herself in there. I can look at something. Like that light bulb, he said pointing at the ceiling. Yes, they have electricity. It's run through a chakra supply coming from a self. Powered generator. This comes from the fact that it takes chakra to make chakra. So a small supply of it is set aside to make more, and the rest is made to power the place. This was my idea that I made up on the spot. Steal it and die. I know that it's coming from a secret room underground, that is run by a self. Powered chakra generator, with a 100,000 volt output. I can instantly analyze anything with with as little as a glance. He said, taking his eyes away from the light bulb. Then Naruto glared at something before swiping his hands through the air, as though he were trying to catch a small bug. What are you doing? Hitomi asked him. Trying to catch the little colorful dots. You actually amaze a 500-year-old Kyubi, but sit there and try to catch little dots made from your now broken eyes. He just groaned. They left. Come back little dots, come back. Hitomi started beating her head into the table. After a second, she quit, and loudly cleared her throat, bringing his attention back to her. You're correct about your assumption. Yes, it was a wise demon, specifically a two-tailed Kyubi. So that alone made you a Hanyu. That's where I come into the story. With my blood, it makes you a full-fledged Yukai. An untrained one, mind you, but a Yukai nonetheless. Hitomi sighed. The problem is. My blood is dormant inside your body still. To activate it, I have to kill you. She said, resisting the tear threatening to fall down her face. Naruto was shocked. And. How exactly does that work? He asked, still in shock. I pull out a fang. When I do the inside instantly degrades so that all that's left is the enamel. Then I fill it with blood and. She stopped. Over time, Hitomi had come to love this boy whom she had originally had motives to murder when she was first sealed. She couldn't kill this boy. Yet, she would have to. I stab your heart with it. You instantly die, and my blood soaks into your heart. It should force your heart to beat again, sending my blood through your body, and making you a full demon. He nodded slowly. There's only one drawback. Nobody's ever lived through it. There have been many attempts on Hanyu from Yukai, but it's never once worked. 
The theory is perfect. The problem is when they're supposed to come back to life. They don't. Naruto stared at her in shock, but eventually overcame it and steeled himself. I'll do it. Those three simple words. That sentence was with the list of sentences that can change people's lives. Hitomi shook her head. No, he didn't accept. Kit. I have to tell you something before you say that. Because you didn't just say that. The Kayubi sighed, before looking him in the eye. I love you. Now Naruto's eyes widened. He replayed her voice saying that over and over in his head, and only one response could come to mind. I love you too. He said slowly. But. Her eyes widened. He rejected her? Hitomi could feel the tears welling up inside her. I. I don't know. I want to do this. I just. I don't know. I need to go think. With that he stood up, kissed her. She felt passion, love, and fear in it all. He then walked down the hall. Despite it all, she still smiled. He wasn't rejecting her. He was scared. Then she realized something else. She was going to have to kill him. Naruto would face this challenge. It was in his blood to overcome all challenges presented to him, and this was just another one for him to overcome in life. Naruto slowly walked down the long path from the kitchen to his room. It was a long walk. Gave him plenty of time to think. He knew he had said that he loved Hitomi, but was it true? Was it just a spur of the moment thing? Her smile ran through his head quickly, and he grinned. Yes. Even though they had barely known each other, they had spent enough time together to know that much. But what about this new development? Naruto didn't want to die. He didn't want to lose Hitomi, or his friends. But then he grinned. The rewards. He'd instantly be a nine tail, along with a nearly endless amount of chakra. The insane strength would be nice. Sighing, Naruto put his head in his hands as he sat down on his bed. What could he do? There were two choices. Life, put death off, or death, possibly come back. He sprawled himself on his bed and groaned. Why couldn't he just flip a coin or something? Grinning, he got up and grabbed a coin. When he was just flipping it, it slid down his thumb a little, and shot off, burying itself into a wall. Naruto groaned and flopped back on his bed. Naruto's eyes widened as he realized something else. Why him? She could probably get every straight, and possibly gay man she wanted. Why choose him? The little demon boy, who was beaten and ridiculed just for holding her. For protecting them. Why should he live and go back to that like he planned? Naruto could tell from the look in Hitomi's eyes earlier that he mind wanted him to say no for personal reasons, but the hard-ass trainer part of her mind was wanting him to say yes. But still. Why would such a powerful being choose him? Naruto groaned. This was proving to be a royal pain in the ass. He sighed as he got up and started pacing. Plus how could he look her in the eye and tell his half-demon side that wasn't dormant was waning? It wouldn't be coming back either. But he would die. But, if he did live. He wouldn't. But if he did. Maybe. Just maybe he would be worthy. Maybe then he wouldn't feel so ashamed to live. Hated by humans, pitied by demons. There was no way he wanted to live a life like that. But there was no way he could live through that. If half-demons couldn't live through it, how could he? A lowly human, whose half-demon side was waning. He couldn't tell Hitomi that part. Naruto knew if he did, the disappointment in her eyes. If Naruto did die. He couldn't let himself miss her. He had to separate himself from her as much as possible beforehand. Maybe then the hole that was forming in his heart wouldn't hurt so bad. He just hoped she missed it when she stabbed a fang into it. Otherwise he'd have to be stabbed again. The more he thought about it, the more he felt his heart disintegrate. What if he had no heart left? What would happen? He just wanted to die. He probably would. And wherever it was he was going, he would be forced to watch her, but never be able to go near her. Naruto got up and walked back down the hall, into the kitchen. Hitomi was still sitting there. The table where her head was hanging over was wet with tears. Hitomi. I'm sorry. He said, not able to look her in the eyes after she looked up at him. But I can't not do it. I feel I have to take this on. I want to prove what the villagers said about me was wrong. 
I want to do it. She let out a choked sob and threw her arms around his neck. Fine. I need. I mean. I'll. I'll go get everything ready. She turned, and with one last glance over her shoulder, she looked at him, finally making eye contact. She saw a single tear roll down his face, as he stood there solemnly. She was done. All the symbols were drawn in blood, some covered in dirt, where a tear had smudged it, and laid in a pile to the side from where she'd scooped it up and thrown it over her shoulder. Naruto lay shirtless, the area around his heart covered in shapes and squiggles also, trying to steal himself for what was about to happen. Somewhere, deep inside, he knew that this was going to cause a pain like no other. Not even when Sasuke put the Chidori in his chest. But he tried to ignore that thought and continued to watch Hitomi. Hitomi. He said suddenly. She looked over at him. What are we? She sighed. I don't know. Would you be my girlfriend then? She looked at him, shocked at first, but then her shock melted into a soft, but sad, smile. Yes. She whispered quietly. She continued checking her runes. If even one was wrong, he wouldn't be waking up. She stood up and looked at him. I'll be back. I have to go get a book from the library to make sure I got this right. She turned and walked out of the room. About 10 minutes later, she came back and flipped through the book, looking at each shape, symbol, squiggle, and the kanji. Then, being careful not to step in any blood, walked over to him and checked the ones on his chest. Then she put her finger over his heart, and sent a small spark of chakra into the skin over his heart. He could now hear the blood rushing through his ears. If I don't speed up your heart, my blood won't have enough proteins to replace, and it won't work. I have to convince your body that you're exercising so it'll produce more protein. He nodded, as he felt himself start to pant and sweat. This is going to hurt. Isn't it? He asked quietly. At first he didn't think she'd hurt him, but he noticed the tears welling up in her eyes. I won't lie to you Kit. The ones who did come back. Died from the pain. She said quietly. I lied because I didn't want to scare you about the pain part. That's what's killed around 25% of them. The other 75%. Just didn't wake up. She said sadly. He nodded. She started going through weird seals, that looked like normal ones, except the occasional finger wasn't, or was there, that should or shouldn't be. She slammed her hand onto his heart, and all the blood traveled up onto the runes around his heart. Like when Kakashi sealed Sasuke's seal. It stung a little, but not much. Then she reached up, and winced as she pulled her left canine tooth out. She held it under her gum for a second, then removed it as a new tooth came in behind it. I love you, Kit. Then she slammed the tooth into his heart. He screamed. It hurt like nothing he'd felt before. Naruto felt the tooth explode in his heart, and that was it. He was standing beside his body, watching as he continued to scream, before all his screams quit. Hitomi let out a small whimper and tears flowed freely down her face. Suddenly, he started glowing red. Naruto felt a pull towards his body, before he was sucked headfirst into it. The pain was unexplainable. He wished he'd never agreed to this. He opened his eyes and could only see long enough to see Hitomi jump away from him, then his eyes rolled into the back of his head. His bones were on fire. They were melting and rebuilding. He could feel millions of strings unravel from him, then felt them, along with more, re-ravel about him, his insides, and then connect in his head. His tailbone suddenly exploded in pain, as he felt his skin melt and reform. The pain. That was all he could concentrate on. The pain. His head felt like it was going to explode and knowledge filled his head. Thoughts and knowledge and theories that didn't make sense at first, suddenly did as the two-tailed Kyubi's blood was unlocked to its full potential. Filled his mind at an unbelievable rate, his mind expanding to make room for it all, then contracting to fit inside his head, over and over again. In the distance he could hear his screaming. His heart was going to explode at this point. The seal on it had to be the only thing keeping it from doing so. His skin stretched and reformed as his muscles expanded. Then, all at once, it stopped. He felt his body quivering, and his throat hurt from screaming so much. He'd stopped breathing for a second, before a very small breath entered his lungs. Just enough to keep him conscious. There were sharp pains shooting through his body. 
Don't relax yet, Kit. It's not over. She whispered. Naruto could hear the sobs she was failing to hold back. Then the pain was born anew as his eyes shot open, then blew from his sockets, his optic nerve going behind them like a streamer, and a small stream of blood behind it. In their place grew new ones. His arms and legs were gone in a bloody explosion, and in their place grew new ones, clawed and stronger. His ears were blasted out of his head, eardrums and all, more blood streaming behind them, as a new pair spouted from the top of his head. The whiskers on his face started bleeding as they were singed from his skin. In their place grew six real whiskers. Next his nose turned into a bloody mass of nothingness, blood splattering his face, and a new one was grown in its place. They looked exactly the same, but the new one was stronger, able to track sense. His throat was on fire as the screams stopped. That single part of his neck swelled, till his entire esophagus blew out of his neck. His clothes now had blood dripping from them into the pool that had now formed about him. In its place grew one that now was unaffected by fire. It's over Kit. It's finally over. She said, pulling his head into her lap. Naruto's eyes shot open, and looked at her. They were still blue, but had a slitted cornea. Hitomi. It hurts. He whispered quietly. The pains were still shooting through his body. Hitomi felt a few tears slip as she felt his body still quivering a little. She picked him up bridal style and carried him down the hallway. Thanks. Hitomi. His voice was raspy. Don't talk. You won't be able to a while anyway. She said quietly. He nodded slightly. They reached his room, and she laid him down on his bed, then threw his sheet and comforter over him. I've got to go burn the blood and body parts before they start to rot. Then I'll be back. However she said this to deaf ears as he had finally given way to unconsciousness. When Naruto came back around, he found that Hitomi was asleep next to him. He tried to move, but gasped in pain as he did. Okay, so movement was a big no-no. However, his gasp of pain woke her up. She turned over slowly, as not to shake him. How ya feeling Kit? She whispered. He tried to say, like crap. But all she got was some mouth movement and a quiet wheeze. She cocked her head to one side. Naruto slowly bent his head back, indicating his throat. Oh. Water, right. She slowly got up, taking care not to jar him, and walked out of the room. She came back with a glass of water and put it to his lips, he gratefully drank it. Like crap. He finally said. His voice was still barely a whisper. She chuckled slightly at his response. I'm just glad you lived. You've officially made history. One of you dreams has finally been realized. Aren't you glad? He laughed a little. You still hurt? He nodded slightly. Here. She put two pills in his mouth and gave him some water. He swallowed. You're lucky I keep aspirin around in case I run out of chakra. Otherwise you'd have to go cold turkey. He slowly moved his arm and pulled the covers off of him. He sat up, all of his movements slow, with the occasional wince whenever he moved too fast. Eventually, he was standing and making his way down the hallway. I don't remember being this tall. He said. She now had to look up a little to make eye contact with him. Betcha don't remember having a tail either. She said, chuckling slightly. He sighed and kept going. Where are you headed anyway? Bathroom. He said simply. It made sense. He'd been lying there unconscious for two days. But if he kept moving at this pace, he wasn't going to make it. Let me help. She said, as she got his arm over her shoulder, and helped him walk down the hallway. He gave her a grateful smile as they made it down the hallway faster. They came to the door and he took his arm from over her shoulder. I can take it from here. Sure you don't need help? Her response was a door slammed in her face. Laughing, she sat down, waiting for the scream. After a minute or two, it came. She broke out laughing. He must have looked in the mirror. A few seconds later the door opened and he came out wide-eyed. I look so different. Nobody back home will. He stopped. Nobody back in Kona Hill recognize me. He was grinning now, obviously pleased with the changes. I see you like you tail. She said grinning, as it swished from side to side. Yeah, it's awesome. It was almost worth all that pain. Plus, you were right. 
1,000 pounds is nothing anymore. She stared at him blankly. You mean you had those damn things activated this whole time? Well god no wonder you hurt. You were being crushed. No weights until after you've recovered. She made a ram seal, and his weight seals glowed red before fading. But. No buts. You've been unconscious for two days. We're getting food and then we're going to the library for lessons on sealing until you've healed. He frowned. Two days? That's it? I thought it had been a week or something. Then he grinned. That explains why I'm so hungry though. Can we go get some food? She grinned too. I'm so glad to hear you say that. She swung his arm back over her shoulder, and they hobbled down to the kitchen. No wonder you were so heavy when I had to drag your sorry ass to your bedroom. I nearly dropped you three times. She grumbled at him, talking about his weights, as she helped him into a chair, her hardened exterior taking its place again. Now, to celebrate, we need a big ass breakfast. She said, pulling out pots and pans. About 15 minutes later, she had ramen, rice balls, rice, and dango on the table. She stood up to get some tea and he took a bite of ramen. Tastes like crap. He said, joking. Actually, it tasted better than it did before. His taste buds must have gotten stronger after the transformation. He instantly felt like two pebbles embed themselves into his forehead, then fall to the floor as a powder. See if you get any more breakfast or pain pills from me. She screamed. He cackled evilly, before coughing. He'd been talking way too much. I was kidding, it's great. Better than ever. Naruto was forced to whispering again. She frowned. Meds must have worn off. That's the bad part about being a Kyubi. Unless you get really strong painkillers, they wear off in no time. She put two more pills in front of him. These are strong enough to kill a moose, or if it lives, let it jump off a cliff and say that was fun after it lands. It should do the trick. He popped them in his mouth, and continued eating. She sat some tea down in front of him and he took a quick drink, before continuing to eat. Just wondering, do you realize how long you'll live now? He looked up at her and shook his head. Let me put it this way. You'll see a good number of millennia. He started choking on his food. She reached over and slapped his back, dislodging the food from his throat. That's. A long time. She just grinned. Good thing is, your body aged during the transformation. So I'm equal to about 25 in human years. You're probably around 20. So good thing is, me and you are close enough in age that it won't be considered. Wrong. He grinned. That was good. Plus you're at legal drinking age too. So that's even better. They finished eating, and Naruto was finally feeling good enough to move around freely. Okay, now for sealing lessons. Uh talk about boring. She said, making a face. Naruto laughed. You have a reason to thank me then. She cocked her head to one side in confusion. The half-demon side of me already knows it all. It was all transferred to me. She leapt across the table and hugged his neck. Thank God. I hated learning those, and I'd skip stuff teaching it just so I wouldn't have to drag it out. So, you've got the day off to do whatever you want. Except train. We'll do that later. She said, knowing what was going through his mind. He wanted to take his new body for a test drive. On the better side for me, you've outgrown all your clothes. He looked down and realized his pants looked like Manfras, and his long-sleeved shirt was up to his elbows. When he bent his arm, a loud ripping sound was heard from the back of his shirt. She grinned evilly. Guess who's going shopping? He groaned. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.